Hi, I'm Jim Linnell with Tandy Leather. I'm going to be showing you how to make a wallet and I'll be going through each of the steps with each of the tools in enough detail so that you'll know how to get the best results out of your leather work. Now that we've completed the beveling, we'll add some of the detailed textures to the design, um, like putting the seeds in the center of the flower. Uh, we'll, we'll start with that. Um, the cedar tool um, that I'm using, it, it, it's a smaller one. It's got some lines that radiate out from the, the center of it. All of these tools come in a lot of different sizes, um, different sorts of textures and such. I like this particular one because it makes it easy to make it look like all of these seeds fit together. And there is a technique to this. To make this look like a, a raised up seed pod in the center, a lot of times when I look at leather work that some have done, they will just really hammer this seed in here and make it look like they used a nail set or something like that. And it's all sunken into a hole in the middle of this flower. Um, and what we want it to do is look like a, a cluster of seeds that are raised out, ready to kind of come loose in the center. So the first thing I'd have you notice is the angle of the tool. You see how um, this tool is again angled. I'm getting a much deeper impression on one side of the seed. Uh, it almost looks like it's beveled. And I have it angled. I'm going around that, that outline that was raised up when we used the camouflage tool. Um, by going around it like this, um, it helps to keep that area kind of puffed up looking. And you want to go around there and put as many seeds as you can right on that line without them overlapping, without one biting another one in half. And then you come back and fill this in with row after row of seeds until you have it all filled in. And one of the things you probably will notice is how lightly I'm tapping this tool. It, it's not being hit very hard at all. Obviously, it's a smaller surface area. There's not as much. Uh, the tool's not that big. So you want to be careful about how hard you hit that. But by putting that outside row in with a little bit of force with a sharp angle on it, you end up making it look like these seeds are beveled. And the end result is that you have a raised up seed area here that looks like it's full and ready to pop out of there instead of being um, hammered into a hole in the middle of that flower. Uh, that's that's a, a trick that uh, you probably need to try to use. Another uh, cedar tool I'm going to use on this design is one of the larger ones. This one here has a little bigger uh, uh, opening in the center, but it also has lines that radiate out a lot farther from the center of it. And I'm going to use that um, in the center of this scroll, just kind of right out here in the center of this tightest part of the, of the curve. I'm going to use that as a center point. So we'll um, get that seed impression place there. And since we already used a tool that placed these seeds in the center of this flower here, we already had that one covered. So we're uh, done with the cedar tool. Um, that's the, the places that we would use it on this design. The next thing that I want to show you is the veiner tool. And there's a few things about how a veiner tool is used that I'd like to show you. Um, first of all, um, let, let me get a line ready here for you. Um, you know, that, that curved line that went up the center of the acanthus leaf, it was kind of a, a line shaped about like this. And it had the camouflage tool going along one side of it. So I'm going to put these in place just so you can see how they go. And the, we used a corner impression here. And we're going to be doing the same thing with the veiner tool. But uh, that's one of the things that the camouflage and the veiner have in common is a lot of times you're using just the corner of the tool, getting a partial impression that fades out as it goes. Um, that line that goes up the center of the acanthus leaf was first uh, used with a, a camouflage tool. And then we used the beveler to bevel the other side of that line. And then once we have that beveled, it's now ready for the veiner impressions. When we use the veiner tool, uh, again, as I said, um, 
we use just the the corner of the tool quite a bit. A lot of times, uh, just because of the length of the tool, it would be chewing up another leaf beside it if we didn't use the corner of it. But also, this helps to give some angle to it. When we use the Vayner tool, um, like along this line that goes up the center, we, we have it angled so that um, not only does it make a deeper impression in the center and then it fades out and gradually disappears, but we also rotate that uh, angle just a little bit between each impression so that it looks like it kind of like fans out and it gives some motion and some, some contour to those leaves. And that's how I'm going to be using it on this design that we, that we are working on. So let's, let's pull this in here. Here's the uh, acanthus leaf here. We've got the camouflage tool going along one side of it. We've got it all beveled ready for the Vayner tool on the other side. This one curves the other direction. One of the things about where the Vayner tool gets used when it's being used on an acanthus leaf is it's usually used on the outside of the curve and the camouflage on the inside of the curve. So that's something to keep in mind. But we'll start down here at the base. We'll have a little bit of an angle. And again, this is because this is such a wide tool, if we use the full impression, we'd be chewing up part of these leaves right alongside of it. So we have to angle it for that reason. And then as I move down the length of it, I'm going to slowly change the, the uh, uh, direction of it so it kind of fans out and gives us that uh, that kind of a, a flowing motion. It makes it look like everything kind of moves toward the center of this leaf. It, everything kind of blends into the middle of that crease. You see how that Vayner impression works. It gives you a nice um, deep impression. You should have you know good moisture content in it uh, when you're doing this. Uh, but that's uh, how the Vayner tool typically gets used. These Vayner tools come in a lot of different sizes and different textures and, and so forth. Um, there, there's another one, sometimes this is called a shell, but it's still a Vayner type tool. Uh, I'm going to use this one around the outside of this scroll. That's another place that we need some impressions here. This scroll, even though it's got some contour on the inside, it's really blah looking there. It needs some, some more decoration to it. So we're going to use the Vayner tool to do that. And again, the angle of the tool and the rotation of the tool is very important. We're going to start using these impressions right here where this part of the swirl kind of ends up and then we're going to work all the way around all the way out to the center of it here and we're going to change the the angle as we go so um, the first impressions I'll make a couple here and then I want to explain to you what determines this angle I kind of imagine that that if this tool was long enough and you followed this curve all of these impressions would eventually end up right here in the middle of this seed. So I kind of use that as my guide. I'm kind of pointing each one of these impressions so that it looks like it would eventually um, arrive at that, at that seed. That allows me to give um, each one of these impressions um, a little bit of a twist. I can change the angle of it just a little bit as, as I move around here. You want to get your, your spacing to be somewhat consistent and just uh, again as you work around here you get you'll end up this nice spiral type of a of a pattern and, it, and uh, this is how we will dress up this this scroll I'm, using, I'm making the, the corner of the tool um, deepest impression right out here on the edge of that, uh, of that scroll, the, on the line that we beveled. And, and then as it comes across the scroll, it fades out and disappears. And you see I rotate it a little bit every time I tap it. And I'm getting lighter and shorter with the impressions as I get toward the center. But that's how that scroll impression gets stamped. We have this nice uh, spiral-type motion that goes along there with it. One more place that I'd like to use a Vayner type of tool is on this little bud that runs up the in between the scroll and the stem of the flower. And I've got another one of those shell type of Vayners um, that I'm going to use there. It's a little shorter one, a little, little smaller one, so we'll use it to uh, add a little bit of texture to this. 
and here I'm starting, I'm going up um, with the deepest impressions along the outside edge as the impressions come toward the center of the of that little bud, they fade out and disappear. And I'll come up both sides and let both of them kind of fade out in the middle and it gives it kind of a, a neat ribbed effect. You can see that we get a nice little ribbed effect running up that, that, uh, that little bud right there. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure and check back often here at our blog, and we'll show you more tips and ideas on how to get the most fun out of your leatherwork.